shall uh, start with the next part of the quantum mechanics in the preliminary study we have uh, worked about the black body radiation spectrum where we have seen that the distribution is non uniform certain wavelength have more prominence in the emission and this uh, particular wavelength prominently radiated from a black body has inverse relation with respect to temperature of the radiator this is what the observations we have made now the uh, we have to give a proper reason for this particular uh, observation why it is happening like so so for that different workers have given given their own uh, uh, explanation and the foremost work in this direction was done by stefan's fourth power law or stefan boltzmann law according to this rule the energy radiated per second per unit surface area of a black body is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature so look at this if you write the uh, given uh, rule in the form of an equation we can write as energy radiated is e per second is t per unit surface area therefore e divided by t into a is proportional proportional to t to the power of 4 also we can write e divided by t as power p p divided by a must be proportional to the power of 4 or if you cross calculate we can write p proportional to a to the power a to the power of 4 so to remove the proportionality symbol i can write p is equal to sigma t to the power of 4 where sigma is called as stefan's constant so the value of the stefan's constant is about 5.67 10 to the power of minus 8 watt per meter square per kelvin to the power of 4 see uh, if what we can assess from the stefan's fourth power law now we can observe that the x axis of the radiation spectrum has not been uh, explained instead the y axis has been explained that means to say if you heat up the given black body to temperature t1 you can plot one particular radiation curve find out the area bounded by that particular curve will gives you the uh, value of the um, uh, the energy radiated per second per unit surface area or in the intensity rather so thereby uh, various work has been uh, experimental studies have been carried out by stefan and this particular rule has not explained any exp any particular uh, uh, information with about the wavelength axis of the radiation spectrum okay so the second uh, important uh, study this has been done by wien it is popularly called as wien's law right see according to wien again wien also done some experimental uh, studies and he has also uh, carried out the experiments uh, for various temperature of the given black body so for temperature t1 what is the lambda max you are going to get for temperature t2 what lambda max you are going to get like that several number of experiments he has uh, worked out so accordingly the product of this uh, wavelength corresponding to maximum intensity emitted from a black body with the temperature is always be a constant the product of lambda max and t is always be a constant factor and this value of this constant was established by beam and it is given by 2.9 to the power of minus 3 meter kelvin this is the speciality of uh, wien's formula in fact the estimation of this uh, the constant factor which is uh, lambda max into t that constant factor it is a very important uh, result for us so which we based upon this only it is possible for us to utilize this relationship for uh, astronomical studies where the temperature of the hot star 
can be easily calculated in a proper way. But uh, uh, though Wien's law has uh, explained according to the, or the relationship has been established for the x axis spectrum as a temperature uh, parameter, it has not explained anything about the dependency of lambda max with respect to uh, intensity factor or non uniform distribution. Everything is not being covered in this particular rule. In the second part of the study, Wien has uh, applied the classical theory to explain the black body radiation spectrum. Accordingly, the black body can absorb and emit radiation continuously. And based upon this, the concept of energy density was introduced. Energy density is the energy radiated per unit volume. So this has got a direct relationship with the intensity of the emitted radiation. And uh, using the classical uh, knowledge, Wien obtained a relationship for u lambda d lambda as equal to c1 upon lambda to the power of pi e to the power of c2 by lambda t d lambda, where the c1 and c2 are constants. And uh, experimental curve, they are all uh, closely matched in total for shorter wavelength regions. But for longer wavelengths, there is a lot of uh, deviation we are observing. So we found that the calculated result and experimental result has uh, uh, deviated a lot. So this result requires the explanation. So hence, now we have to go for some modification. Anyway, Wien has given a contribution that up to certain range of wavelength, the formula is okay. Experimental studies and uh, uh, this uh, theoretical uh, formula calculation is matching each other. But we have to do some corrections in the longer wavelength limits. Okay. Next, we have the next with the work is done by Raleigh Jean. According to Raleigh Jean's law, so this is something, uh, a different approach given by Raleigh Jean, wherein he has considered a cubical box inside which the radiation is present. So a cubical box is taken as the reference. Within that cubical box, Radiation is existing in the form of a standing wave such that there are main number of modes are available. So if you can consider this is the standing wave number one that is first mode of vibration. There were two modes of vibration, three modes of vibration, etc. So all these things are, are all these standing waves are being created due to oscillators present inside the given chamber. So if you can heat the given black body for higher temperatures, then the oscillations will take place briskly and you will see that the number of modes available also becomes higher and higher. Enormous number of modes are present inside the given cavity. So to explain this process, the Rallagin has the made use of the law of equipartition of energy. So accordingly, the energy associated with each mode of vibration is of the order of kT. That is, if you summarize all the modes of vibration and calculate what is the energy associated with each and every mode and take the average of that. So you will see that it is of the order of kT. Therefore, Raleigh Jean's idea is uh, slightly different compared to that uh, of the uh, Wien's uh, concept. But the concept of energy density has been retained. The classical approach is only being used here also. But the uh, analysis is little bit different. So we can consider now that the average energy associated with every mode of vibration within the black body 
chamber is of the order of kt so keeping this result he has obtained an expression for energy density given by u lambda d lambda equal to 8 by kt by lambda to the power of 4 d lambda so this is uh, most popularly called as rayleigh jeans formula so rayleigh jeans formula highlight is it is utilizing the concept of equipartition of energy okay right now again we have to test the validity of this uh, rayleigh jeans law so again you are observing that the numerator is a constant factor denominator is containing a factor of lambda to the power of 4 then determine the value of u lambda lambda for various lambda various uh, wavelengths in fact and prodograph so you can obtain a curve there also and compare that relationship with that of the uh, experimental result so thereby you can assess the correctness of this particular formula accordingly it looks like this so we are observing that now this uh, red colored curve is showing the or rayleigh is by rayleigh jeans uh, formula and its blue colored curve is through the experimental uh, results so experimental result is showing this type of nature rayleigh jeans curve is of this particular nature which shows that there is a mismatch is present between calculated result and that of the experimental result but however when you go to the longer wavelength limits there is a close matching we can observe between experimental result and the calculated result apart from that one important fact we observe so this particular curve is uh, if you keep on reducing the value of wavelength it keeps on increasing increasing it may go like this therefore you may come across uh, the situation that all wavelengths are all uh, uh, if you go for shorter and shorter wavelengths then intensity of the radiation intensity of the emitted radiation becomes higher and higher and this is one of the important result shown by uh, rayleigh jean formula which is not correct so because we don't have a crowding of the intensity of the emitted radiation only for shorter wavelength region it has been distributed both for longer wavelength as well as for the shorter wavelengths therefore it is completely wrong it's again a mismatch we are observing in the shorter wavelength limits this is for most popularly identified as ultraviolet catastrophe so if the concept or the uh, term catastrophe in this context indicates the mismatch okay so you can observe a mismatch between uh, uh, observed result and the calculated result in the lower wavelength limits and hence it is more popularly identified as ultraviolet catastrophe okay so because of this reason we can see that wien's law is very useful for shorter wavelength limits and rayleigh jeans law very useful for longer wavelength limits so we don't have a single relationship which can be applicable both for longer wavelength side as well as for the shorter wavelength side so this actually brings us a one important clue that there must be something uh, missing in our understanding such that for this particular black body radiation spectrum problem the classical approach is not useful so we need some correction in the classical uh, approach so that particular work is undertaken by the planck's radiation law okay so according to max planck he has assumed first of all the black body radiation chamber contains several number of oscillators he considered that the chamber black body radiation chamber contains some number of oscillators which are capable of absorbing the incident radiant energy when you allow the radiation to interact with the given black body so these oscillators will absorb all those radiations that was the important assumption made by planck but second important aspect to see the 
oscillators can absorb or radiate energy in discrete steps very very important this is the foremost uh, uh, correction being introduced by planck because all in our earlier study the either you take the beans uh, uh, concept or the relagin's concept we have considered that the given black body is absorbing or emitting the radiation in a continuous fashion but the planck has overruled this concept such that the black body or the oscillators present in the black body will absorb or radiate energy in the discrete steps that is in the continuous and you got some discreteness will be there splitting will be there is a demarcation will be there or discontinuous we can say okay and the how, how basically the emission or absorption of energy can take place it's all because of the transition of or transition of these oscillators in various levels will be the basic reason behind it if the given energy is being absorbed by the uh, black body radiation chamber means oscillator will receive that energy that will moves from lower energy level to the higher energy level that is the absorption process similarly if an oscillator in a black body will de excite it will comes back from higher energy level to lower energy level it leads to emission of radiation this is what the planck's idea in the uh, entire process okay accordingly if you know if you find out delta e is the energy difference between the two oscillator levels then we can find out a relationship that the frequency of emitted radiation is given by delta e upon h so this is actually coming out from the relationship e from the planck e equal to h nu which is a photon or a bundle of energy so that has been extended to uh, further uh, analysis that frequency nu is equal to delta e by h okay now with this assumption planck has uh, developed a relationship so the concept of energy density put forward by beam retained by planck and the concept of uh, that uh, oscillators and the modes of vibration as suggested by uh, relagin has been slightly modified that has that are also being used by planck and addition addition to that a small modification instead of having the continuous absorption or emission there will be discrete absorption and discrete emissions so energy absorption is or emission is completely discrete in nature that was the stand given by planck so accordingly we can find that u lambda d lambda equal to 8 by hc over lambda to the power of 5 e to the power of hc by lambda kt minus 1 d lambda where the term h is the planck's constant capital c is the velocity of light and k is the boltzmann constant there is two extremes we are going to use that is one is the lower limits of wavelength and the upper limits of wavelength the idea behind this is whenever you apply uh, for lower wavelength limits if the planck's radiation formula leads to beam displacement formula then this particular formula is true similarly when you apply it for higher wavelength region if planck's radiation formula reduces to relagin's formula then planck's radiation formula must be true that is how the validity will be done so for that first parity we shall uh, verify that is whenever lambda is small so according to planck's radiation formula you have u lambda d lambda is equal to 8 pi hc over lambda to the power of 5 e to the power of hc by lambda kt minus 1 d lambda so this is the actual uh, uh, formula according to planck 
So, uh, in this particular equation, the term, whenever you go for lower limits of wavelength, so of course the numerator of the expression has no variation, but changes will take place in the denominator only, of which the significant factor is e to the power of hc by lambda kt. Therefore, I can write now hc by lambda kt term, it becomes a large value. Okay. When once the uh, hc by lambda kt becomes larger, obviously we can write e power hc by lambda kt is also high. Hence, we, pay, we can approximate that e to the power of hc by lambda kt minus 1 is of the order of e power hc by lambda kt itself. Therefore, for all lower limits of wavelength, you can write u lambda d lambda as equal to 8 pi hc over lambda to the power of 5 e power hc by lambda kt into d lambda. This is the modified expression or modified relation of the Planck's radiation formulae for all lower limits of wavelength. See, in this particular equation, we can rewrite this as u lambda d lambda is equal to 8 pi hc can be taken as c1 divided by lambda to the power of 5 e to the power of. So, in this equation, uh, hc by k is a constant factor. I can make it as c2 divided by lambda t into t lambda. Therefore, this is similar to that of the Wien's displacement formula. Thereby, one can assess that the Planck's radiation formula leads to Wien's displacement formula for all lower limits of wavelength. So, obviously, you know, the Wien's displacement formula has given the correct result for, for short limits of wavelength or lower wavelength limits rather. Therefore, Planck's radiation law must be true for lower wavelength limits. In the same way, we can think of the second important uh, test that is whenever lambda is high. For all upper limits of wavelength, what is the uh, rule or what is the, or exactly the law says or what is the modification in the Planck radiation formula, we shall think of now. That is, when lambda is high. So, when you think of the upper limits of wavelength, so what happens to the uh, Planck radiation formula, we shall think of. That is, go back to the expression u lambda d lambda is equal to 8 pi hc over lambda to the power of 5 e power hc by lambda kt minus 1 of d lambda. This is the equation. Now, again, uh, the when you go for the larger or upper limits of wavelength, upper numerator of the expression has no difference, but the denominator of the equation has got its own importance. Again, we shall go for the equation for hc by lambda kt the term hc by lambda kt becomes smaller. Okay. So, obviously what happens? e to the power of hc by lambda kt, what happens this we have to identify. Because you see, uh, you cannot simply, of course, e to the power of hc by lambda kt becomes smaller anyway, but you cannot neglect it. Because e to the power of hc by lambda kt has to be now expanded to linear terms in fact, that is given by 1 plus hc by lambda kt plus hc by lambda kt whole square over 2 factorial plus hc by lambda kt whole cube over 3 factorial plus etc. This is what the 
expansion of the exponential term we are going to have so obviously what happens is see the higher order of lambdas that is if you go to the hc by lambda kt whole square what happens denominator you have got lambda square so you will get lesser value there similarly if you go to next factor hc by lambda kt whole cube that is lambda cube will be there, there the denominator so all these things will give you a very small value therefore we can approximate that this e to the power of hc by lambda kt can be written as 1 plus hc by lambda kt itself so obviously what happens now in this uh, particular equation u lambda d lambda it is equal to 8 pi hc over uh, lambda to the power of 5 into 1 plus hc by lambda kt in place of e to the power of hc by lambda kt i have written 1 plus hc by lambda kt minus 1 so what happens one can be get cancelled similarly the term hc can be cancelled and one of the lambda can be cancelled with this so obviously you get u lambda d lambda is equal to 8 pi kt over lambda to the power of 4 d lambda this is the modified expression of planck's radiation law to higher wavelength region of course you can see this relation is uh, similar to that of the uh, rayleigh's formula in fact applicable for the higher wavelengths therefore now we can go for a conclusion such that how you can uh, make use of the planck's radiation formula so you know that from the single relationship of the planck you are finding that for short wavelength limit it satisfies the uh, rule and it is equivalent to that of the wins formula and uh, for higher wavelength limits it is satisfied with respect to rayleigh's formula in fact therefore this particular formula is capable of explaining the black body radiation spectrum over the entire range of wavelengths and one can say this Our uh, Rayleigh's formula and Wien's displacement formula are the two special cases of the Planck's radiation formula. That gives a uh, complete understanding of the black body radiation spectrum, and there's ultimate equation given by Planck, of course. And this is uh, one of the very very important relationship in the, the milestone in the. a uh, case of expansion of the black body radiation spectrum and from this relationship the further studies were uh, started and apart from this most important uh, concept introduced by planck is regarding the discreteness or in fact the energy absorption or radiation emitted from the given black body all takes place in discrete steps this is a very important modification we have we are having and this is the starting point of the quantum mechanics